Welcome to this system design video. In today's episode, I'll share with you the pros and cons of three different API technologies, specifically REST, GraphQL, and gRPC. My name is Mario. Let's go. So these three API technologies are used as a data exchange. What this means is the communication between two different entities. This could be a front-end like the browser and a back-end server, or it could be a back-end server communicating to another backend server. So it's the data that is going from one place to another that what happens in between is the API technology that we're going to be discussing. In this case will be three of them. The first one will be REST, representational state transfer. And the basic premise is that we can use the standard HTTP methods to query and mutate resources represented by URIs on the internet. It was introduced in 2000 and what this means is that we can use the four HTTP methods to interact with resources and those HTTP methods will be the typical well-known methods like POST, CREATE, or rather POST, PUT, DELETE, and UPDATE. POST means CREATE, PUT means UPDATE, DELETE means DELETE, and GET means READ. So all of these four HTTP, HTTP methods are uh, using resources as paths. And the path is literally what it means. So if we define uh, let's say a user's system and we define a path called users we could also define a path called users slash id where the id identifies a concrete resource that belongs to the users this id will be used for maybe deleting it updating it or getting the actual value the way it works when we are talking about the actual data, data exchange is that we are going to be using the resource maybe we're going to be passing a payload typically in JSON and we are going to be receiving back a JSON payload as well that represents the resource that we were interacting with in the first place typically again in JSON but you can use any other uh, format that you want to use so what are the pros of using REST? well it's a mature API technology has been you know since 2000 there are hundreds of ways to access REST APIs, to build REST APIs, and if you have a programming language, it's most likely that programming language can build REST servers and REST clients, depending. Because typically everything is using HTTP, so no matter what language, lang programming language you use, it, must, it is most likely it's already supported. So the conventions make it straightforward, and what this means is that if we have a resource called users, you know that maybe you can access the resource as uh, the, re the resource users by just getting to that endpoint, calling the get method. Maybe if you call post, for example, that will indicate that you're creating a new user. Similarly, you assume that maybe there is a, a an ID that you can indicate in the, by the end of that resource itself to get a concrete a specific user, for example. Another pro of using REST will be that it's easy to debug. That means that you can literally look at the network traffic in your browser and see what's happening because it's just plain text, JSON, XML, and things along those lines. What will be a con? Well, it's prone to underfetching. And what that means is that depending on your resources, maybe you need to pull more information specific to one in particular resource. For example, let's assume that you have a user's endpoint, but you need to get details specifically specific to each one of the users, let's say permissions. So you need to loop through each one of the users and get the permissions for each one of them, which indicate calling, first of all, the user's endpoint and then calling each one of the concrete users slash id slash permissions that will give you permission details for each one of the users similarly on the other hand there is a it is prone to overfetching what this means is that maybe you don't need all the data in the first place maybe you build the api to actually return the permissions with the users together at the same time but maybe you don't need that maybe you just need the name maybe you just need the id and those kind of things so those are kind of a pros or cons rather that are applicable to rest so what are some of the Go tools available for REST? Well, we have Goa, which I previously mentioned when I was discussing design first. You can have also GoSwagger, and you can have also API or API code gen. Now, all of these through three tools are for uh, OpenAPI or Swagger, but there are also tools for RAML, API Blueprint, and similar. So what is GraphQL? GraphQL is a specification introduced in 2015 that allows you to defi de define an API using a schema, a schema definition language, that is, that allows you to define types, queries, and mutations. It's really flexible because you can define those types in advance, and therefore your clients can use the definition of those queries and types and mutations to create and pull values 
or passing values depending on what they need. They don't have to use everything at the same time. So the way it works is that you define a type, for example, user. You define some concrete fields and their type. So it's a statically type. And then you define a query, for example, getting all users. And maybe you can indicate when you're doing the data exchange, say, hey, I'm going to be using the query all users, but I'm going to be only requesting the name for all those users. And in that case, you will be receiving a JSON back that only includes the value that you requested in the, per in the first place, which will be name in this case. What are the pros of using GraphQL? Well, in this case will be there is no overfetching, like I said. A, you are going to be specifying the fields that you need in the first place, and those are the fields that you're going to be receiving back. There is not, nothing like you get, get, hey, get me this data, and I will be sending you everything back. You need to be clearly and specific to what you're receiving and asking in the first place. There is a specification and therefore everything is a strongly type. So each one of the fields, you know in advance if it's an int and a string or similar related types. So this is a strongly type in the first place. So what are some of the cons of using GraphQL? Well, data querying is shifted to the server side. What this means is that the clients, they are fine and dandy because they are only requesting specific values and fields depending on what they need. But this logic is moved to the backend and then the backend engineers will have to implement that and do something with it depending on what was requested in the first place. Yes, it's a fantastic thing for getting fields concrete to specific types, but all the logic that handles all the selection of fields and data is moved to the backend. Another con will be that caching is much more complex and this is because each one of the clients will be requesting fields depending on whatever they need. They will not be requesting the whole results itself. So it makes caching a little bit more complicated. So what are some of the tools available in Go for using GraphQL? We have the GraphQL, obviously, the implementation of GraphQL in Go. We also have a tool called GQLGen for generating servers in GraphQL. So what is gRPC? gRPC is a specification introduced in 2016 that typically uses a binary format for communication called protocol buffers. These protocol buffers define a contract between clients and servers and has to be implemented in advance before actually doing anything at all on both sides, that is, on the client side and on the on server side. The way this works is that you define a message, it's sort of like a class that indicates all the fields and their types and also a number that indicates the order of that field. This is important because, because everything is uh, converted into binary format. We're using this IDL to indicate the fields and their types and one sequential number that indicates the position of that field. Similarly, when we're implementing the API for communicating with the server, we need to define a new message. And this is typically a request and a response. And depending on the data that we need, we need to define concrete messages for those. And they follow the same rules. You need to define a field, you need to define the field type, and you need to define a sequential number that indicates the position of that field in the message itself. And then on the gRPC side, you just define sort of like an interface in Go that indicates the receiving value the type of message that you're going to be using and also the response that you're going to be returning back to the client. When we're implementing this in the context of a data exchange in the API technology, you're literally calling sort of like a method that happens to be remote. You pass in the, the attributes and the payload and then you receive the value that you're supposed to be receiving according to that message. It's sort of similar to REST, but it uses the binary format. So what are some of the pros of using gRPC? Well, it can generate the code in your favorite programming language. And this is, could be a con as well, because depending on the programming language that you're using, maybe there is, no, there is no option to generate that code in the first place. Another pro of using gRPC will be that it's highly performant. This means that it, because of the binary format in the first place, the amount of bandwidth that you're going to be using when communicating between different services will be significantly smaller if you compare it to something that is human readable like a JSON or a, a, lip, a literal string that is used in other API technologies. What are some of the cons of gRPC? Well, it's a little bit harder to implement. You need to have a little bit more of experience when you're trying to implement this. Another con will be that by default there is no browser support, if so you're planning to use it on the front end using a browser, you need to do a little bit of things to make it work. 
Now, it's not like JSON and HTTP, like for example, GraphQL and REST. What are some of the tools available in Go for using gRPC? Obviously, we have the gRPC Go, which is the gRPC implementation in Go. We have the Proto C compiler, uh, which is for compiling the protocol buffers and generate code in Go. And also, we have this tool called Buff that allows you to lint and verify version, versioning and compatibility between different versions and whatnot. So, between these three API technologies, which one is the best? And the answer is. Well, none of them. It depends. And it depends on the requirements that you have, the knowledge that you already have available, deadlines and resources that you can make of, make use of, and depending on the needs that are coming from your stakeholders. However, I want to share a little bit of guidelines depending on what, when you should be using, perhaps initially or considering first when you're trying to build a new API. Let's start with REST. REST is the easiest one to implement. It's literally available um, right away in the programming language that you want to use. And at the same time, it is easier to implement for your consumers. They don't need to understand anything new. And typically all the infrastructure available, it's already in place for accessing REST APIs that happen to be most of the times using JSON over HTTP. Now, GraphQL will be my second recommendation if you're planning to do something that is query heavy, that where the customers are willing to take the schema that you're offering them and then only access the data that they need. This is harder to implement than REST, obviously. There is a different uh, train of thought that you need to follow for implementing GraphQL, but it's also much more efficient than REST because of the pros and cons that we saw before. Finally, gRPC, and I think gRPC, what I like to use it for most of the times will be for internal APIs that happen to be only server to server and typically behind a system uh, that doesn't necessarily expose APIs. But again, there are cases where maybe you need to expose that API to the internet and make it available to your customers. Keep in mind that although it's really efficient, it's harder to debug and it takes a little bit of time to implement as well. So all of them have the pros and cons and what I highly encourage you is to look at these three API technologies and look at the cons, look at the pros and define and determine what is the best one that you can use in the first place. So with that being said, what comes next in this system design series and system architecture in Go will be going deeper into gRPC and eventually GraphQL. So we'll talk to you next time. Take care and stay safe. See you.